Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is The Ramble. I'm Alex, and this goes until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego, or Oswego? Is that how it's pronounced? Oswego, E-E. E, E. E, Oswego. Uh, uh, in uh, in Oregon, which is uh, just a short stone's throw from a stone's throw uh, in Portland, Oregon. Um, is that still going on there? I haven't checked recently. Really? Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I have no idea. Really? No, okay. Portland. I mean, what, 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 and most of Portland is nowhere near where that goes on, so. Yeah. Well, it was just like you you mentioned last time. It was just like one block or something that it was happening. Well, it's more it's three or four blocks, but it's one area where there are a bunch of government buildings, mm-hmm. and so therefore it's a you know it, it it's an obvious place for demonstrations of all kinds. Right, right, and uh, as and and rightly so, people should be able to demonstrate. Yeah. Not if Pompeo has his way. Who? Uh, Trumpio? Pompeo. Trumpio? Is that what you're calling him now? No, Pompeo. Oh, Pompeo. Okay, I thought you said Trumpio. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that would be kind of like if uh, Pompeo, Pompeo uh, married Tom Trump. Oh, I said Trumpio. it wrong. Pompeo, right. You're yeah, right. It would be a little, yeah. Uh, but Pompeo, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just, I, I think what's happening there is terrible. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, as I say, I've said this before, we're living in a banana republic without the benefit of bananas. Yeah. You know. You know, I'm I'm worn out now, officially, that every day you wake up, and and the president has done something, or is in the process of doing something, that never crossed your mind that any human on earth would do, and I'm worn out. He's just worn me out. Well, I, I pay less and less attention because, you know, the other thing about he keeps saying, OK, we're going to do this. We're going to you know, do something outrageous to certain types of people or something. And then a few people say, no, you're not. And he says, oh, OK. And he backs down. So it's just he makes noise, but nothing ever happens. You know, it it, it, it did you have, I, I think Bill Barr is more dangerous. Did you happen to see the Axios interview at all that they did sure. with him? Boy, I'm telling you, I felt so sorry for that interviewer. As somebody, Why? because, I mean. He did a great job. I did. I know he did a great job against all odds because what happens is Trump doesn't even let you finish your question before he starts uh, pontificating and going with run on sentences so he can play out the clock and get the hell out of there. I don't think that's the motivation at all, but. Go ahead. But I mean, he just just plain rude with the interviewer. The interviewer couldn't get a whole question out, and then hey, it's ter- your turn to answer. You know, it was very rude, very terrible. I, you know, I don't think rude applies in the world we live in right now, Alex. I don't really. Well, think it's- rude is not a uh, 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 an idea that Trump has any concept of. You know. But I also think that it's not important. Yeah. I don't- I mean, that he, I think that his rudeness is a given. It's always been there. Uh, and, and given that all the stuff that's going on and all the stuff he tries to pull off and that his henchmen are actually pulling off things in their area more quietly, um, I don't think rude applies. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, it, it is. It's always been part of who he is going back decades. Yeah. Well, follow me with where I'm going on this. Okay. okay. Um, you and I have never had children. But had we had children, and those children... I have a child. Well, you do have a child, yes. Oh. <laughs> well, you, you, yeah, you found out about that. Not right. yours. Well, I have, a chi- I, have a child, I have a child, too, somewhere. I don't know. Uh, he, he, I, he may not even be alive any longer, for all I know. 
But anyway, the point I'm making is uh, that if you had a child and that child constantly was trying to get your attention, how would you handle that? Would you would you pay? You handle it the way every parent does. That's what children do. That is their job. Yeah, but I mean, here you have a child in Donald Trump who is constantly trying to get attention. Every day, I'm sure he wakes up and says, how can I get attention today? Because we've never had a president this exhausting. We've never had a president who every day is the news cycle. Come on, they go away for a week or two. They do their job, and then something happens, and they appear in the press. But they're not there every single day, and the discussion is not Trump 24-7. But it became that. I mean, thank God there was an explosion in Beirut because for one cycle... Oh, don't, 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 don't. Please don't put it that way. Well, for one it's cycle, we weren't talking about Trump. You know, I mean, it, it's just... I mean, what would you do with a child like that? Would you pay attention to him and play into that? Or would you like say, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being a, uh, what is it, an enabler to that kind of attitude? I'm not, I, I don't know how to answer that because there's no answer. I mean, you and I can't, we have no way to affect anything. Yeah. But isn't the press kind of been his, his enabler? By every time he makes a petulant sound, they pay attention to him? Well, you know, you have to... That's a very, very hard call. What is news? It's And, and, and in this presidency, it's harder than it's ever been. You don't know. You don't know when he comes out there and starts whining about what somebody said about him um, or didn't show up at his inauguration or something... You don't know that he's not going to segue into something that is truly important. Let me ask you a question. You worked for Barbara Walters for how many years? Uh, doing, Eleven. Doing her specials. Eleven. And, 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 and 2020. And 2020. And and you went and did a lot of pre-interviewing of people and setting no. up the interviews. And hand no, I mean, you talk to them on the phone and get parameters, but you don't. You don't give them questions, ever. No, no, I didn't say that. But I said that you, you, you do... Sometimes uh, uh, there are pre-interviews in which you talk to them and just see what they're up to and so on. But anyway, my point is, did you ever do Trump? No. Isn't that amazing? No reason to in those days. I mean, he was, he was just a fairly stupid attention grabber in, in New York. That's all he was. Yeah. I mean that isn't somebody you would put on the Barbara Walters specials for 2020. Yeah, but she never she never interviewed him either. I would have. I, I don't know. I think I saw I an know. interview with her and him at one point, but that might have been after you left, you know, because it maybe didn't become I important until then. I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, because I, I wondered if you'd ever met up with him. Uh, no. I met up with him for one second once in Las Vegas, um, but uh, you know, I mean. I, I just, I'm tired. I'm exhausted of him. You know? I'm pooped. And I think the American public is too. I think he has overstayed his welcome. And now he's clutching at straws to try and get reelected. It's amazing how nice he's become to the press in his press conferences. I, uh, I describe him as the building super who doesn't pay attention to you till October when it's getting close to December in the tips. You know? And that's exactly what he's doing now. He's the super, super is trying to get his tip this year. Uh, all of a sudden, his behavior kind of has changed. He's a little nicer to the press. Uh, he doesn't go off the handle, you know. Uh, but he knows he's, he's in for a bad time right now. Because I looked at Biden today and I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of Biden. But there's nothing particularly unlikable about him. There's everything unlikable about Trump. And so between the two, I, th I think Biden's got a good shot. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, given the stupidity. I'm, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I, I'm, I, I just, I don't know where to go with people's prognostications on this. It, it will be what it will be. When the time comes, I don't think guessing who's going to win does anybody any good. Now, let me ask you, because you have an audience that's old, older. 
uh, because you do a thing called Time Goes By dot net. We should plug that, mm -hmm. oh, in which you yes. talk about <laughs> what it, what, <laughs> what it's li what it's like to get old, and what it's really like to get what it's really like to get old. What it's really like to get really old. Uh, but yes, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> but my question to you is. Uh, how are is this older audience reacting to all of this? Because usually an older audience is somewhat more conservative, aren't they? I mean, politically? Well, you have to understand that my audience is specialized. One of the most interesting things, I rarely do politics. I do it a little more often, maybe once a month or so now, because Trump is Trump and things happen. But... Um, Universally, in 16 years, that blog, on the rare occasion I do something political and make it evident where I stand, which is usually on the left side of things, um, the Republicans, who are never regular readers, they're, ne they're never ones that I've seen their names before, who ever left a comment or anything, um, they always are nasty when they disagree. They are really nasty. Enough that I that they attack other commenters or attack me personally. And the thing that's not allowed on my blog on any topic is you cannot attack anybody personally. You can attack ideas and explain why you disagree, but not a person. Mm -hmm. And exclusively when people and by the way, if you do that, there's no warning. If you do that your comment is removed and you are blocked from ever commenting again. Nobody gets a second chance. And if they are exclusively right wing or Republican, always. Really? Yeah. Exclu nobody on the left side, when we're on the rare occasion we do politics, ever, ever steps over the line in the argument, if argument, discussion, whatever it is. Um, today is not a political day on the on what I posted, but some people disagree with what I said, and they've explained why, and it's been interesting. And so in that way, I've called the audience. Nobody who behaves the way so many right-wingers do gets a second chance. They don't get to come back. So I can't answer your question. Mm. Uh, would you, my would, would you pretty much would you just, would to you, the left side of the cent of center. Would you describe these Republicans as perhaps have been being the bullies in the schoolyard? I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I as a metaphor, I, I guess it's perfectly good as anything else about mean people. I don't know. Yeah. You don't think that, that, that left-wingers are capable of being that way? I don't know if they're capable of it or not, but... They're universally, almost universally, I'm not talking about my blog, just around the web. On the, I don't often pay attention to the comment sections on news sites. Yeah. Sometimes I'll scroll through them a little bit. And when they disagree, and when they disagree vehemently, they're funny. They can be funny about it and still make their point. Yeah. Never met an angry right winger who had any humor about it. Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, uh, on my uh, show every night, there's a chat that goes beside the video oh, okay. where people can chat. And uh -huh. the mean chats are, now that you mention it, always the conservatives. Uh, I won't say conservatives. Conservatives are a different brand from Republican, necessarily. Uh, uh, but if, people who consider themselves right wingers are the nastiest ones. You know, are they watching your show? Well, they're watching the show. They're commenting on what's going on and so on. Uh -huh. And there are a couple that just they go in there and they they literally obl try to obliterate the chat. Well, yeah. I mean, th those aren't left or right wingers. Those are trolls. And you ban them. If you don't ban them, they're going to screw up your show forever. Well, I don't consider the chat my show. You know, uh, well, it's, it's just there a, on the screen. It's there on the side, and if people want to read it, I never look at it. I hardly ever look at it, but when I do look at it, I notice that there were people who, uh, one guy calls himself American Patriot. He's always trolling. He's been doing it for the last two years, you know, as long as I've been using YouTube. So, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I find that what you're saying is true, 
that uh, the, uh, the uh, right wingers have a tendency to be nastier than the left wingers, and that's probably why we got beat up in the schoolyard by the bully. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, um, why can't we have a civil discourse? Uh, no, blah, 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 you know, fake news. What I hate, I'll tell you what I hate, I'm just getting to hate it, is every time you try to argue with one of those people, and I have one of those on my show every night, uh, and I have them there. I, on purpose, I, you mean? A uh, 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 right winger, right winger. On purpose. Uh, yeah. I mean, you book that person. Yeah. Can, no, I, okay. no, he calls. Completely pro-Trump, but I don't ban him because, after all, he makes for a good conversation and he's respectful of others. Okay, so, you know. But, I mean, uh, it, it's maddening because what happens is is that he they, they just have no sense of... Um, of, of being able to have a civil conversation, and, and that's Don't the problem. Don't you think that that's, you know, you know, I've never had this, I've never talked about this, that it seems to me that I, I use the phrase right wing in terms of left and right politically, mm -hmm. they're conservatives or liberals or progressives or whatever, I, I just can't keep, I think everybody has their own definition of that, so it's not useful to label somebody mm -hmm. that way because everybody thinks of it differently. But it's just it's just interesting to have a conversation with different points of view. And so I'm always kind of puzzled by just the yelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, or, or, or if, if people are typing it, whatever, you know, the all caps version of that. But uh, it, it seems that we're always on left and right, as particularly in the Trump era, trying to convince one side, both sides, trying to convince the other side to believe something that is 180 degrees from what they do believe. And you're not going to ever get anywhere that way. You've got to find, if you're going to have a reasonable conversation that's thoughtful and something you want to consider it would you would need to t speak in a way that engages the other person to think a little bit differently not you're not going to turn anybody 180 degrees in one conversation yeah and i think that goes wrong when you've got one side that is always yelling or if it's comments on a news story or in my blog all apps screaming and it um you just alienate the other person's not going to pay any attention to what you're speaking. Well, the point that I was going to make, and I, I kind of lost my train of thought because <laughs> no, all because age. of my age, I'm losing my train of thought more and more. I'm tired all the time. I lose my train of thought. But anyway, get back to my train of thought if I can remember it. What I hate uh, about this guy is that anytime you say something that's factual and there is not an argument against the facts he calls it you mean like the sun comes up every morning yeah he calls it fake news that's the yeah. excuse yeah, well, he got that from trump but yeah that's the excuse for anything and that's what trump did in this axios interview anytime there was a fact thrown at him well that's fake news well you can't just say it's fake news you have to specify why it's fake news and well, point it out nobody ever gets anywhere alex because there's nowhere to go when someone says something like that. There's no next thing to say. Because you could say all day long, or Jonathan Swan could have said through the whole interview, well, that's not true, and here's what really was said or happened. He's just going to continue to say fake news. So it's just a conversation. Even, even, if, Swan tried to put, put, even if Swan tried to put it that way, Trump wouldn't have let him get the whole question or the whole statement Well, out. you know, you keep getting hung up in politeness and forget that i mean that doesn't exist well it's not even politeness it's having a discussion waiting for somebody to ask you know you trump can, doesn't ever have a discussion how do they you, yeah. like i just oh, interrupted I you he interrupts i mean but how do you answer a question you haven't even heard yet you know and that's what he does but alex why i don't see why you get hung up on something that's been going on for as long as you've ever heard of trump well, I wish I had never heard of Trump, but that's another point altogether, you know. I mean, anybody who lived in New York looked upon him as this uh, this uh, idiot, 
you know, it, it, this 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 blowhard, you know. I mean, uh, uh, you remember the you know the and the Central Park group, the, those guys uh, that he said, oh, let's throw them in jail and everything like. That. I mean, this guy's been going on with this crap for years. We knew what we were getting. And that's why New York didn't vote for him. We knew what we were getting. The rest of the country, the, all they knew about Donald Trump was he was this guy on television every week, you know, and saying, you're fired. Oh, oh, I forgot he had that TV show. Well, that's how the rest of the country got to know him, you know. And they figured, oh, well, he seems to be a big businessman and he's a billionaire, you know. I mean, the reason I don't think he wants anybody to see his taxes is to see how poor he is. You know, so, I mean, you know, it, it, it's just, it's, oh boy, but what if we, you know, this is the end, uh, this is coming towards the end of my life. You're going through a situation where you don't know how much time you have left. Did, did we have to spend our last years with this? Just ignore politics and go do something else. Yeah. Now, how do you, you know, I, I kind of feel mad that, uh, uh, that I can't go and travel at this point because oh hey, how, Alex let it go let I know go. I know but how much time do I have left I mean too bad it, it, you know nobody it's nobody's fault it happened I know I know and I think and I don't know if you agree with me but I think this is the worst thing that's happened in our lifetime well I you know I don't want to rank everything it's so I I think that the pandemic together with the econ economic terrible thing that it's caused um black lives matter which is a dynamic new thing we don't know where it's going trump himself um and there are two or three other things but this is the most difficult hard awful time of my lifetime yeah and fascinating and fascinating i think we old people maybe you notwithstanding um easier about lockdown and we need much stronger much tighter lockdowns if we're ever going to beat this and stop getting so many deaths every day people have to stay home period and you never leave without a mask you never get anywhere near another person and until we do that until 95 percent of the people do that the pandemic is not going to go away well i made the point last night that the greatest co-enabler of the pandemic the, the greatest what enabler of uh -huh. the pandemic is capitalism that we don't know um, how to say we're going to forego our economy for a time so we solve this problem because we could we could we can we could solve this problem tomorrow if we all shut down just shut down and then probably in a month we might be able to start opening up again do you know that here in new york last Three days, New York City, not a single death from COVID. Mm -hmm. We learned how to do it. And by the way, the press isn't even reporting it. You know, and, and to me, that's a big story because while the uh, rest of the country, I hear, oh, four, five, 400 died in this town, this state, or 300 died in that state. And I go, three days in a row, no deaths in New York City. It's amazing. It can be done. And it, mm -hmm. But it means that you're going to have to say, hey, human lives are worth more than the money. Well, what it also means and what no governors are willing to do is to say that if you go out without a mask, if you walk into a store, and many to have this, that have a sign that say no entry without a mask, mm -hmm. there's a penalty when you don't follow those. There has to be a penalty. Or there's, because there are these huge groups of people we read about in the news every day that not only aren't wearing a mask and screaming about not believing in them, they're spitting on people, coughing on people. Yeah. There has to be a penalty for that. I mean, I don't understand if you're coughing on purpose on somebody, what is the difference between that and sticking a needle with some lethal thing in their arm? I, I don't see the difference. Well, you know, um, uh who, who knows how we're going to solve this, but it's the selfishness of the American public that is literally fueled this Well, it's not American. Pandemic. It's happening in other countries, too. Yeah, but uh, I'm talking about us. I'm just dealing with us. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, 
we're just too selfish to be able to, to, to suck it in and say, okay, this is what we got to do. I got to stay indoors. I got to wear a mask. You know, and what's so terrible about a restaurant saying you got to wear a mask? The fact is they have signs that say no shoes, no service, you know. So I think a mask is a much more important uh, consideration than no shoes. Do hey. they really have signs that say no shoes, no service? Yeah. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah, that's like a beach, a beach places. Hey, listen, we, we've run out of time. Okay, all, all Trump all the time. All Trump all the time. How you doing physically? I'm doing okay. You're doing okay. And you people can read you at timegoesby.net. Find out what it's like to get older. Either that or just look at the two of us. <laughs> true, true. Thank, thank you, Ronnie. This is my COVID haircut. I haven't had a haircut oh, in two years. Well, I have, actually. I got clippers <laughs> and uh, took care of it. Anyway, thanks, Ronnie. See you in a couple thank of weeks. Thank you, darling. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Oh, I love talking to Ronnie. Uh, I hope we get to talk to her for a lot more time. But, you know, uh, who knows? Who knows? But I, uh, you know, it, it's funny. You know, I married this woman and I was a lousy husband. And uh, we didn't speak for many years. And then we started speaking and now we're good friends. And that's wonderful. And I am happy to say that. That's the way it should be. Anyway, let's start going into our um, um, Zoom patrol. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, and I've got to uh, go into the gallery view. And there they are, ladies and gentlemen. That's the citizen panel so far. Oh, we've got, uh, got Vernon Nunn. Hi, Vernon. Good to see you. And um, uh, Phil Meyer and uh, Charlie Wallace. Hi, Charlie. How you doing? Hi, Alex. Yeah. Is, is Texas doing better today? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Okay, well, I just thought we'd check in on you. That's nice to know. Uh, what do you mean? What is it at? What are, what are you doing? Well, we still had like 8,300 new cases today and about 250 deaths. So. Yeah, boy. boy. We had five deaths today. I, I don't know how many of them were in New York City, but we went three days. Without a single death in yeah. New York City. That's pretty I'm damn so good. Jealous. You know? That's because we did our job here. And by the way, today, uh, Andrew Cuomo, our governor, just became the chairman of the National Governors Association. So, wow, good. So, you know, he's, he's got his job, you know, set up for him for the next year. Uh, hello, Vernon. How are you doing out there? Wait a minute, you got it. your microphone isn't on. Your mic isn't on. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yep, you, there we go. There you, there you go. How's it, near, go. how's it in your neck of the woods? As Willard Well, it Scott was actually uh, pleasant enough to take the dog for a walk today. So. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. I, by the way, I wonder who Palmer Eldridge is. I'll bet it's... <laughs> John Larkin. Of course it is. Of course it is. So you talked, took the dog for a walk. Uh, did you have a mask for him? No, we were socially distancing. Well, you know what we got to do? I got to get... <laughs> I'm, I'm still set up from last night, okay? So I've got to get rid of uh, the jackpot here. Some of it, because we're not jackpot now. We're just whatever we are. Uh, how you doing, Phil? Oh, I'm, uh, as Patrick would say, I'm peachy keen. Peachy keen? <laughs> well, you feeling better than you were yesterday? Yeah, I uh, I got a good night's sleep, drank a lot of water. Maybe I was dehydrated. But, I, was, uh, I was really tired today, again. I, I don't know what it is with this tiredness of mine. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know. The after effect of the... Uh, I, the I think the, I read somewhere that the, the kind of radiation you and I have had uh, can give you fatigue for maybe anywhere's up to a year. Have yeah. you heard that too, Vernon? Did you feel, did you have fatigue? Not really. Yeah. Um, cause I, I think probably because I was working full time when I was taking the radiation, I would 
stop by this uh, center, this medical center on my way to work. Yeah. And do the 15, 20 minutes and then go on to work and do my regular job. So that kind of kept you active. Yeah. Plus, I was, that was, what, almost 10 years ago. So, yeah. Well, you know, I did the same thing. Uh, I, I was getting it at 730 in the morning and uh, then I go to work and I'd work a full day. And uh, I was fine during the treatments. Maybe towards the end of the treatments, I started getting a little tired. Well, I just I found in the last couple of weeks, I've been exceedingly tired. And um, I, I went and looked it up because I, I didn't think that, you know, I, but, but I had two types of radiation to begin with. And uh, it said that from radiation treatments, you can have fatigue for somewhere like four, three to four weeks. But... Then it said it can last up to anywhere from three months to a year. So, yeah, here yeah, I it's, am. Uh, it's the price we paid. I guess you had the good radiation, right? I had the good radiation, yeah. <laughs> no, I had two types. I had two flavors. I wanted. Uh, I didn't want just one flavor. I had to get two flavors. Like a, like a, what, chocolate and vanilla. Huh? Chocolate and vanilla, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I mean, I got double radiated, so I mean, I, I, it could be they. And they say you don't start feeling the fatigue till several weeks after your last treatment. So, you know. Yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, uh, it could be. Uh, well, well, we'll wait and we'll see. Who knows what the story is? So anyway, um, um, uh, oh, hello, Brian. How are you? You at home today? Yes. So we'll yes, really overcast. It's really overcast today. So sure we'll, season two. we'll probably and, see the kid today. Will we? Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany was telling me something interesting though. <clears throat> so Vietnam, you know, she reads. She's Vietnamese, so she she's always on the Vietnamese news. Uh, you know, she goes on the news channel stuff. And they had one case in her town, Da Nang, real popular town. Mm -hmm. One case. They isolated that person. They're paying for everything to isolate them. They did tracers on that person. They started shutting everything down again. Mm -hmm. So they, they start having a handful of cases, and they start flipping the switches right away. Yeah. And here we wait for tens of thousands a day or a thousand a day cases or whatever it is now, and we're still not doing anything. That's why those, a lot of those Asian countries, they, they shut everything down really quick. Yeah. She's from Da Nang? Yeah. Now that was very famous during the war, as being yep. a major battle place. Was she alive at that time, or was she? No, I think there was a major air base there. Oh, okay. wasn't it? Yeah, they still have yeah. a lot of the, the uh, you know, those those shaped, you know, like the Gomer piles. Quonset huts. Quonset huts. Quonset huts. Yeah. 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 The, the Gomer pile. Uh -huh. Is that how Gomer you do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, she, I've been there. I've been there uh, three times for long trips. Yeah, and it's uh, pretty amazing going from north to south and seeing the differences and and the people and everything. It's, it's pretty pretty cool. Now, did you meet her over there? Or did you meet her here? No, I didn't do window shopping. No, my <laughs> my friend. I know a guy who did the win we call window shopping he went over and the lady showed three girls and he left with one. Oh, i see no you didn't do that <laughs> no no she was she's here she's here for a while yeah, yeah. oh and her oh. whole family's been here and everything so. oh okay that's fine it's amazing isn't it we used to be at war there mm -hmm. it's just yeah. it's just it's amazing how time changes you know and yeah and wow. I, and a lot of stuff a lot of my friends vietnamese and man, when you start getting into, you know, third world country like that, and you don't think when you're, you know, a kid in California, when you're, you know, 15, 16 years old, that there's a kid on the other side of the world that's going to be competing against jobs with you. And you see where they're growing up and where you're, yeah. you know, lucky to live, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I have two, I have two monitors here and I come in tonight and one of the monitors is out and it's gone. It's dead. And it's my Apple Cinema monitor, so I had to go get another one from another room that wasn't an Apple. It was just it's a Dell, and I put it in here, and I suddenly realized it's a bigger screen than the one I replaced. <laughs> so I'm not unhappy about it, but I sent away to get a power block because I think that's what went out on me. But it's what do you use it for lights? What well, do you use it for lights? I mean, you keep talking about your lights. These are Elgato's. 
Uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, uh, they're two different lights, actually. I wish I'd gotten one that was the same on both sides. But they, the one that I got, which is the smaller one, which is called the Air, the Elgato Air, uh, they didn't have any, so I had to get the bigger one over here. But I can balance them out. You can't tell that one's brighter than the other. Uh, but uh, um, I, that's what I use. And the only problem is it hooks up to the Wi-Fi, and I control it through the Wi-Fi. Uh, and um, if the Wi-Fi goes out on me or goes, gets screwed on me, I don't have lights. You know, it's not like I plug them in and then I got dimmers on them, all right? Uh, which, I'm, I mean, I do have dimmers on them. For instance, uh, I can go here up to the uh, actual, where is it? I'm going to have to find it now. Oh, the, um, uh, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Here it is. See, I can, I, can, I can turn down one side if you see here. See what I do? Alex, when you have yeah. two lights that are the same uh, intensity yeah. and same distance, yeah. then it creates a flat uh, lighting situation on the face. But when you have one move back a little further than the other... One uh, is back further than the other. Yeah, well, that will then uh, highlight uh, the face better than when you have uh, just a flat well, lighting. Well, this is basically flat lighting, but I can also change the, the uh, temperature on it. I can make it more orange, or I can make it brighter and whiter, see? Mm -hmm. So I can do that. So it's, it's, uh, it's worked out okay for me, you know. Uh, but no, one, this one's back further just because it has to be, because I don't have room to have it anywhere else. But Yeah, well, that gives you a better lighting. But uh, these are very good lights. Uh, you know, they, I like the way they, they work, and, you know. Is everybody interested in that? Okay, it doesn't look like anybody is, because there aren't very many people out there tonight. Man, Did you I, hear from Robert? I no, I, I wrote him and I didn't hear back from him. Oh. You know, that worries me, see? That always worries me when I don't hear back from In this day and age, normally I wouldn't, you know? Uh, but when you don't, and you go, He, he huh? dies and uh, I lose the bet. Does that mean I still have to pay it? <laughs> I, I don't know. Did you actually make the bet? Yeah, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Boy, you really have faith in Trump. Hey, I don't welch, though, you know. You don't welch, but you, you don't have, you, you really, uh, you know. That, hey, I'm, Alex, I'm on Social Security now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know. Well, I may have to buy a new monitor and get a, 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 a root canal. So, you know, I, I can't afford these things either. Times are tough. Times are tough, they are. <laughs> When you're on a fixed income, uh, well, at my, least my Social Security's fixed. My my mine isn't even fixed. I mean, it's just uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, it's in my my income. But anyway, I you know it it's. Um, but last night, I don't know at the end. Everybody was really tired last night. Yeah. Everybody seems sluggish. Um, and I don't know, part of, the, part of the tiredness that I feel uh, uh, isn't partially because of the COVID and being indoors, you know? I mean, the only thing Trump is right about with COVID is there are other effects from COVID that affect us that are very negative. Uh, and part of it is this being in the house. I mean, basically, I've been in this house for almost six months. That's not. I read, hmm? I read about a restaurant tour today in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he committed suicide uh, last uh, last month. Yeah. And uh, because of the close down, I guess he was really uh, depressed. His wife is going to continue running its uh, pizza and coffee something house in the city. And uh, you know, I guess the guy was really depressed. And what was he depressed from? The fact the business wasn't doing well, or or yeah, or, or yeah, it was or, uh, business closed down, not being able to, uh, you know, to run the business. I guess he thought he was going to lose it. Yeah. And uh, he chose uh, he chose suicide. Oh boy. Well, you know, I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, we've got to solve this problem. You, you know? know, but. There's there you know on the suicide front there is never any reason to do that. I mean, if it's a financial thing, uh, you can get out of it. 
I, I disagree with you, Phil. There have been nights here where you've said stuff and I wanted to kill myself. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, there are people that are ill and don't want to uh, face the pain of uh, certain kinds of cancer, and they might choose to do that. But, you know, over a restaurant, I, I just, you know. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Charlie. Yes, Charlie. I was going to say there is one financial situation you can never get out of, and that's student loan debt. That is never forgiven. You always have to pay that back. There's no bankruptcy, no nothing. We'll get you yeah, unless, unless Bernie Sanders becomes president. Well, my second wife, uh, Ronnie, not Ronnie, excuse me, Ronnie was my second wife. My third wife, Susan, never paid off her student debt. But those were times when you could get away with that. You know, and quite frankly, I, I don't know why we just don't pay for people's schooling. I just, you know, I, I just don't Public understand that. Do. Why? Why do we put kids in debt, you know, so they can get an education? I mean, there was a time when a college education was was a, uh, uh, a luxury. OK, yeah. but not anymore. You know, it was also reasonable, you know, with the out of country high ed, uh, cost of admission you're competing with people that are willing to pay any price to get a, a U.S. education. Yeah, you know? yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that you know, yeah. I mean, we 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 had a time when uh, when it wasn't uh, a you know a major a major deal. But today, everybody has to get a college education. You know, I never had one. Do you have one, Phil? Uh, I'm, I've been a freshman at nine different. Uh, oh well, I mean, I did the I did the <laughs> the junior college freshman deal. You know. But, you know, I, 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 went, I was going to San Francisco City College, and I was also working at a radio station. What was I studying at San Francisco City College? Broadcasting. But I was working it, and that was more of an education than some teacher sitting there telling me, well, and you have to learn how to uh, pronounce your R's correctly. Hey, fuck you. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm in the trenches doing it. I went to City College, San Francisco City College. I took art history. Really? What did that get you? Uh, it taught me a lot about uh, church architecture, nave architecture, clear stories. Uh, it helped me in my uh, career just to understand. It helped uh, you to uh, learn how to lay rug, huh? Yeah. Carpet, yeah. carpet corners and stuff, angles. Well, it, it's, it has to do with design. You know, you have to know. You about learn that. more about laying carpet by having sex. <laughs> Just don't bur get rug burn on your knees. Don't get rug burn on your old knees. No, the rug burn can be a living hell. You know. Um, but um, um, Vernon, you wrote me something the other day. I'm trying to remember what it was about because it was several days ago. And every time you write me something, it's very good. You know. Yeah. Uh, and oh, up. you. I know what it was. You wrote me about if uh, if if Trump. Um, becomes president it uh, doesn't get the nom doesn't get the win the election and then he protests it and then we don't have somebody to inaugurate by the 20th of January he gave me the whole run of succession president Pelosi yeah president Pelosi mm -hmm. yeah uh, that, now she, but she only gets to stay president until they figure out who president is right that also assumes right. that the Democrats continue to control the uh, House of Representatives. Yeah, 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 yeah. I it would be whoever the whoever the the you know. I think they're going to keep the House. Uh, I don't think there's yeah. a problem there. Considering that the Republicans have got to defend about ten seats, you know. Yeah. That are in competition. They're all Republican <laughs> seats that are in competition. Yeah. Yeah, well, what what happened with Sally Yates today? Uh, I saw a couple ass. minutes of it, and uh, what, what she was the... their asses. The they, they thought they were going to fucking score some points. She threw that shit right back in their faces. I, I don't think so. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, but uh, she's not bad looking. Jeez. Wait a minute. Now, you know, this, this, this is what it boils down to, huh? Yes. You know, uh, uh, maybe she's against Trump, and maybe she didn't agree with the Trump position, but I'd fuck her. You know, uh, come on, Phil. Yes, uh, Vernon. Yeah, I looked it up, and the, and the reason I wrote you is because I had listened to the the ramble where you were talking about uh, the 2000 election, and 
uh, some were saying yes. that it, it took until January before the Supreme Court decided it. And I had looked it up and it said, no, it was decided on December the 12th. Yeah. And they did that on December the 12th because of the urgency of December the 14th when the Electoral College has and to meet. They, don't they meet on the 20th? I get maybe not. No, no. no. The 14th. They meet, well, they may meet on the 20th, but the states have to select their electors by the Constitution mm -hmm. by December the 14th. Now, one of the it, let, let's say Trump loses. I know that's an impossibility, right, Phil? That's correct. Yeah, uh, uh, but let's say he loses, uh, and uh, he, you know, doesn't want to go. Do you think he's going to pull some chicanery? Nah, not at all. You Here's the so. latest one I've heard, Alex. The latest one is if he loses the election before the Electoral College meets, he will resign which will make Pence the president, and Pence will pardon him before the term is over. Yeah, that's but federal. Yeah, you can't pardon somebody for state charges, and that's where the that's where the DA in uh, Manhattan is going is going after him. Oh, on state charges. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, something else. You yeah. know what? They, uh, MSNBC caught these uh, Republican operatives, uh, high level of Republican operatives. Um, working in Wisconsin to get uh, Kanye West on the ballot in, in Colorado and Wisconsin. Really? Why would they want him on the ballot? Hmm. Well, I, I mean, he, black he, votes, he takes know, votes away from Biden. I don't exactly. know if he takes votes away from Biden, Phil, though, because, I mean, it's not like, uh, to begin with, I don't think that people are going to vote for Kanye West mainly because he's crazy. I mean, he's... <laughs> He's loony. He's I don't loony. know. A black guy would vote for Kanye. You think so? <laughs> That's what nope. I would say, too. Charlie, you got your Kanye uh, bumper sticker? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you, Charlie, you say Not you don't think example. anybody would? What's you that? Say you, don't think, sorry, you say you don't think anybody would? I don't think any black guy would. Uh -huh. We all know he's crazy. <laughs> I knew that. Well, apparently Trump thinks he that... that there are some that would vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, I also heard that Biden isn't going to uh, Milwaukee uh, uh, personally to the, uh, what is it? I don't think he ever was going to. I don't. I don't I, think nomination I speech. I, I don't think the Democrats had any notion of getting together in one room. Okay. Uh, no. Why do they need to with the electronics like it is? Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. Zoom. Why yeah. do you need to? Well, also, I mean, this is a different situation than we've had before. And so we have to adapt to it, right? Uh, but the question is, the president wants to give his acceptance speech from the White House. And there's a question whether it is proper. It may not be a question whether it's legal, but a question if it's proper for ethical. A, or ethical to give a speech sure. using the White House as your backdrop. And he goes, well, then I'd have to fly somewhere and we'd have to take all our, uh, our uh, 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 security people and we have to, you know, blah, 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 and it's going to cost the government a lot of money. No, it's not. Go across town to your goddamn hotel and yeah. give your <clears throat> speech there. Or Camp <clears throat> David. Huh? Or go to Camp That's David. Still Camp David's still a government property. Yeah, it's still a government property. But, I mean, come on. The hotel's a stone's throw from the White House. Yeah. Go there. Use the ballroom. Give your acceptance speech. Uh, if you want to infect your hotel, let everybody be in close proximity to each other. We don't give a crap, you know. And then, uh, uh, you know, but it, 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 just don't use the White House. That's not right, you know. I thought they were going to do it in Jacksonville. No, no, for, that, no, that, they we, gave up on. For, well, they, they want to do it where in Charlotte. Yeah, there. And and, yeah, and, and and then he got mad and pissy at the governor of that state because he's a Democrat and he didn't, he really didn't know whether it was a good idea to hold it or, or to hold it in the way you would normally hold a, a convention. So. He, uh, Trump said, okay, we're pulling it from Charlotte. We're going to Jacksonville. They went to Jacksonville, and then all of a sudden the virus got really bad, and everybody said, no, you're not going to do it here. 
So now it's, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. Are they going to use it? Are they going to use Charlotte as the home base for it? And then everything else is going to be virtual? Or I, I have no idea. Well, nobody knows because that's the reason that Jacksonville uh, kind of went by the wayside because law enforcement in Jacksonville could not get a straight answer from the Republican Party or yeah. from the campaign as to what specifics they needed to prepare for. Hmm. Well, in any event, uh, really, Trump has no place to take his convention. And, and I think that if he wants to give his acceptance speech, I think going down the street to his hotel to do it would probably be appropriate, wouldn't, wouldn't you think? Is it, Phil, doesn't that make sense? He couldn't get a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but am he I right get, or am I wrong? Is they're that, all he fun. couldn't get Donnie Jr. to give him permission. Does that make sense, Phil? What, going to the hotel? I don't know if that hotel is set up to take those kinds of crowds. No, 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 no. We're not talking about crowds. He just needs a place to give the speech. He's going to use the White House. He's just going to give the speech there. You know, you, know you, get, you get a big bump from those speeches, uh, you know, on the, um, uh, on the uh, you know, amount of people that are supporting he he shouldn't be uh, thinking about any big crowds as he's been hitting well, those small crowds. I, I don't think he's. I don't think there's going to be crowds, but uh, I'm. I'm interested to see, you know, how they uh, they accomplish this because I have no idea how they should do it. And work, my question is: Is he going to give a prepared speech or is he going to give one of his rambling rants? I'm <laughs> sure it's a combination. Because of if he reads, he is. I don't know why. In four years, he hasn't learned how to read a speech. He's gotten worse. I mean, he's gotten worse. I mean, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Yosemite? <laughs> Yosemite. 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 Uh, you're going to get a good one from Biden. You know, it's the thing about the thing, and uh, it's Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, you know, hey, look, I, I, I feel sorry. I, I agree with uh, don't feel bad for Biden at all. Because I don't know when it's Tuesday or Thursday anymore, you know. Yeah, I'm not mean, running. I don't no, there's so no. You're you're indoors so many days. Listen, most people who run for president go through to so many cities in the normal scheme of things that they have to have somebody there to tell them where they are. Yeah, they don't have weekends. It's not like they're working Monday through Friday and ready for the weekend. It's they go all you know, a, do it's something. It's all really a blur. And Part of Monty Hoffman's act was to pretend that he wasn't sure what town he was in and he would uh, make like he wrote down on his on his hand uh hey san francisco yeah <laughs> you know it's great to be here to begin with nobody knows who monty hoffman is and you picked the worst piece of I material do. he did yes well, you I do like brian <laughs> i remember him i yeah. remember i know you, you guys talked before about tree remember tree mm -hmm. yeah yeah Tree was that? one of my favorite. Man, he would, people who don't know, he was, I'm 6'4". He was like 6'5 or something, bald, biker-looking guy. And he would come out and he would do like half of, oh, am I freezing? Yeah, you froze for some reason. Yeah, he froze. Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny freeze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you, boys oh, there you go. Now, now you're are. okay. Jeez, I froze. He, he would do half of his act as this tough guy, and yeah. then he whip out this fan, and he does this. The rest of his show, he did, like, feminine. It was so hilarious. Was he yeah. gay? No. Was he gay? No, 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 no. No, no. no. Tree was not but, gay. Yeah, he was, he was so good. He was like not that. gay. I wonder where everybody is tonight, both calling and watching. We, we Usually we get around 40 people at a time watching this thing. And tonight it's, like, 27? What? Is there something on tonight that I don't know about? I was watching. I was watching a little bit of basketball to see how they were playing it and how it was looking. And it was—I can't remember what the team was—but they put up all these LED screens around the uh, playing Lower. area, and yeah, then the, yeah, and then they put people who are on Zoom all up there like they were in the stands. <laughs> That, that, that was cool. That's yeah. a brilliant idea. It was cool. Uh, yeah, hockey is just hockey. They have all the seats all covered. 
Rocky looks really boring. Yeah, but I mean, I thought that was great what they were doing. And then, of course, they were piping in uh, 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 crowd sound, sounds. You know. Yeah, they they've had um, they've had some kind of computer generated people sitting down for the Yankees games, and the guy hit a home run the other day, and I watched it. And they hit a home run where all those people were, and they're just standing. They're just sitting in their chairs like this. And there's a home run. There is absolutely no expression or anything. Well, I think the idea of having these LED screens with people from Zoom on them is not a bad idea because if these are actually people who are watching the game, then they're going to have the reaction to the game. I mean, you know, I got to tell you, this has been a terrible thing that's happened to America, and yet, We've become terribly inventive. We've created these amazing workarounds, uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm pr- proud of you, America. Proud of you. Um, uh, I, there wasn't much going on today, really. They had that explosion in Beirut. Did you, you saw that? Wasn't oh, that, that yesterday? Was devastating. Well, yesterday, yeah. but today was the aftermath. And huh? It was a huge crater left behind. I mean, a huge crater, but I mean... Wow. In the uh, middle of the harbor. 100 people dead, That's something like 3,000 injured. It was something nitrate? Uh, no, they, ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. What, what happened was, well, I mean, that's what you 3, used. 3,000 tons. Well, if you think about what took, that, get, what, what, what took down the Murrah building in, uh, in yeah. Oklahoma City, that was ammonium nitrate. That was only, that was only about... That was only about two times. That yeah. was a truck full. Yeah, this uh, thing. Uh, a they, van. They, they had, from years ago, they had this ship that came in, and I don't know, they seized it or something, and they on it, they had this ammonium nitrate, so they unloaded it and put it in this building. Well, you don't exactly, ammonium nitrate, even though you've got it stored in tanks, is dangerous. It, it, it deteriorates with time also. Yeah, and deteriorates with time. And there was some kind of little explosion, like fireworks or something, that were in that building, and that set off the uh, the thing. That's what the secondary thing was—the stored ammonium nitrate. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So it wasn't a terrorist. Uh, no, thing. not Trump at all. Said. Not like no, Trump said. Trump. Oh my God. You know, it, Trump it, yelling most, fire in a crowded theater. Also, most presidents would. Most presidents. This is not a president. This is a something or another i don't know what to wild describe show. it as a wild west show yeah uh he um uh you know would not make a ascertainment of what it is until you ha- you're in you yeah. know in possession of the facts then yeah. yesterday he said well we're thinking maybe it was t- terrorism well, no, it yeah. wasn't. Maybe you know is uh, like great, no, but yeah. you don't. You don't even. You, you know so little at that point. You don't make a suppose. Okay, yeah. you 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 state what you know. Hey, it was a terrible thing that happened there, and we're looking into it. Exactly. But he can't help but try and look like you know Wyatt Earp. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, oh, like he knows more than we do. Generals. Yeah. <laughs> the general said, "We don't know what the fuck he's talking about." Yeah. <laughs> Well, he always know. wants us to think he knows more than we know. Well, yeah. he do, he does he know, does he does know more than we know. There's no question about it. I mean, he I, one tells time Putin all about it. I one time when I was interviewing yeah. uh, Billy Carter, uh, Billy Carter, Jimmy Carter, uh, when I was uh, interviewing Jimmy Carter, I said to him, I said, when you became president, did they sit you down and tell you all the stuff? And I said, you know what I mean. He says, yeah. Said, did they tell you like all these secrets? He said, yeah, they tell you everything you need to know, and they get you up to speed on it. And I said, how did you feel about the things you heard? He said, I was scared. He said, you can't believe the stuff. I can't tell you. He said, but you can't believe the stuff I heard. You know. I said that would be, that'd be the one reason I would want to become president just to find out about all that stuff. Now, Trump released the UFO stuff, you know, and uh, but there's nothing conclusive. No, you know? it never was. It, it, no, you know, that's one of the questions that everybody has. You know, is there UFOs and the president supposed to uh, know the you want to know you want to know about UFOs? I just it, it, they were a affectation of our ego that we're so goddamn interesting that anybody would want to come see us. OK. 
Uh, I mean, out of all the planets in the universe, of which there are billions, okay? Somehow, they come here because we're so goddamn interesting. I think if they came to this planet, they'd look at it and say, let's go to the next one. Let's uh, forget this place. Th these are losers, <laughs> you know? These people can't even keep the place clean, you know? But let's go somewhere else. So I, I get bothered by that. But anyway, so uh, I just, you know, I, I, I was telling Ronnie today in our interview, I said, you know, it bothers me that eh, how many years have I got left? All right? Maybe a lot, maybe not. We don't know. At the rate I feel with all this tiredness and everything is probably about a week and a half. But if, if you know, <laughs> if this is the end towards the end of my life. God, I would like it to be happier and nicer and, and gentler and calmer. And it's a mess. It is just a mess. And, you know, I said to her, I said, I think we're facing the worst time I've ever seen in our lifetime. And she agreed. But she agreed saying, well, there are other reasons, too. I mean, besides COVID. That would be enough, but there's other stuff going on too. And the totality is a world in which we live in that, you know, and, and oddly enough, this is the first time I remember us living in a world where the biggest enemy is not some nation somewhere that's trying to make trouble for us. You know, it's not ISIS. ISIS is a piker compared to COVID, you know? Uh, and so, uh, I mean, we're really been, we've been attacked by an alien, all right? And, and we don't have the ability to solve the problem. We're so selfish, we're so selfish, we can't solve it. Well, we could solve it if we, we could solve it if we had the proper leadership. Could we? Yeah, and, and what is Biden's plan for solving it? Has, has he done anything except snipe at his opponent? No, he hasn't been sniped. He's not president yet. He's not president Doesn't yet. Doesn't matter. What did he do uh, during the other pandemics that uh, he we handed them a playbook that they threw yeah. away? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I well, wait a minute, Phil. Don't go just go. Yeah, we made Phil. Don't go just. Yeah, he was handed a playbook, and he threw it away. And they came up with their own playbook. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Obviously, uh, they didn't, it. Phil, because they but there's been no. Have it. They denied it. They still have not done shit. They hadn't done anything? What about all the PPE? What about all the... Uh, uh, yeah, all the PPE that they've stolen from states and that they've made states yeah. bid against oh. each other for. They, they, they had didn't, it they, manufactured. They didn't supply it from a stockpile because they had no stockpile. No, there was no stockpile because Obama they never... Had three years. No, the, they had three years, yeah, to, build three three up, years to build it up. Obama up. never... Re Obama had years, too. He had the stockpile, and he and he dimin it was diminished, and he never replenished All right, it. but Phil, for true. all you want to say about uh, uh, Obama, he was the president. He wa isn't the president now. And if you looked at it, you went, oh, my God, these guys haven't left a stockpile of PPE, and we might need this someday. Then you do something about it. But Trump doesn't know about such things. He doesn't know how to be president. He doesn't he know doesn't how care. to take care of these kinds of problems. He we barely were, knows about business. We were attacked by the Chinese. No, the we were. No, we were. No, way. Not no. True. Oh, oh, absolutely. We were. They sent people all oh, over the we world. Were. They didn't no, allow... They didn't allow travel in China. They shut it down in China, but they people went everywhere, and we were attacked by them. That's oh, I see. I see. No different than what 9/11 was. No, no, we Phil. Phil, Phil we, no, we it's not. 9/11 was a deliberate attack. And the so Chinese it, did not have a deliberate attack on us. Yes, yes, they did because they could have shut it down. Yes, Phil. A country. What a country does is they 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 have a, a pandemic. And they decide that they're going to have this pandemic so they can get even with the United States. But first, we'll kill our pay people. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, Brian. Yes, yes, Brian. 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 So if he has a playbook, what's the play now? Uh, the play is to... Uh, it is what it is. Open That's what school. he said last night. Yeah. Is, open the right? school. That's, That's their no playbook. Plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's called getting back to normal, and uh, and so Phil, we, get, Phil, we can't get, get hand and wear a mask. We can't get back to normal until we 
slow this thing down. It has been slowed down. No, it that's hasn't. Have, that's no, it hasn't. Half from no, where it, we were. No, it ha ha we it, had two million new cases in the month of July. It, How is that fucking slow? Cases. Down? Look at the deaths. That's what yeah, you got to. Fourteen hundred people died today. Fourteen hundred. Yeah, uh, there was a lot more that died in April. Phil, you know? Phil, in, so uh, what? Yeah. So what? There's still yeah. fourteen hundred dead. Hey, you're not going to be able to stop it. We were attacked, and and oh no, were, Phil, we were not you know attacked. Dying? You know who's dying? The vulnerable. Half of the people that died were in assisted living facilities, oh, and you know who put them in. The, Half uh, of who died were not in assisted living facilities. Oh, Phil, get go get me the figures. Go. Hey, I heard I'm, from no, the president wait today. Minute, wait a minute, Phil. Phil. Ah, Phil. Trump. Go get me the figures, and then I heard then, it from the president. Uh, yeah, go That's get me the, the figures. Last person you want to listen to. Go get yeah. me the figures. Well, he's the no, like that's Korea the has vulnerable people too, and they only have 200 deaths. Yeah. Assisted well, living, assisted living facilities may have accounted for 10 percent at best. Uh -oh. Hey, you know, Phil, was, don't go. No, go look it up. It was over go, 25 percent just no, in New York. It no, doesn't matter. No, it wasn't 25 percent in New York, Phil. I looked at the figures every day. They accounted for about 10% of the total every day. I'll look it up. Yeah, you'll look it up. Where are you going to go look it up on Trump Loves My Dick? <laughs> hey, dot com. Oh, excuse me, dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dot com. Or hashtag blow me. <laughs> they, they showed the Georgia school, the high school going back to school and yeah. only few people had masks and now they're going to start testing positive uh yeah, it's 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 a, it's a it's a it's a shit show folks what are we going to do yeah. you know yeah. i mean he couldn't uh, answer jonathan swan either about when we're going to have uh, uh for a quick turnaround test results he couldn't answer jonathan swan but he had little pieces interview. of paper with graphs on it that justified yeah. oh, what yeah. he thought yeah did you notice that one graph it looked like something you would create in first grade yeah. yeah, big, big large yeah. bar graph. Yeah, yeah. 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 And just the bars and no data. They had no, no legend to tell you what the bars <laughs> meant. <laughs> uh, we're lower. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know what this. It's uh, freopp dot org, and it says uh, this is the headline on Google: Nursing homes and assisted living facilities account for forty five percent. No, no, yeah. no. That and thick. New York Times, uh, New York Times. Let me let me go to that one. Uh, 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 more than forty percent of U.S. coronavirus deaths are linked <coughs> to nursing homes. Link, linked linked to nursing homes. And when part. when and what was what's the date on that article, Phil? Uh, hmm? July thirtieth. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. Well, I don't care, Phil. It says linked. What does linked mean? It means that you can trace them back to the nursing homes. It doesn't mean that 45% of the cases uh, of people dying were in the nursing homes like okay, you stated. So you, stated people... you stated you stated, that over 50% of the deaths were in nursing homes. Yes, and 45%, and, and, uh, according to that other site, uh, New York Times, which you seem to believe, uh, that rag, uh, it says more than more than 40 percent of U.S. Cor coronavirus deaths are linked. Link, to are linked, are linked, linked says, are linked. That means it could have been perfectly healthy workers. Well, hey, died. as far as as far as the uh, coronavirus is concerned, if someone dies of a car accident and they had corona uh, virus. Don't give me that bullshit. That Don't give me that, that bullshit. Don't give me that bullshit, bullshit that argument, true. Phil. It's true. Don't give that me that. No, it's not true. Uh, fake uh, fake news, own. Phil. Fake news. Fake news. It's, lethal. it's particularly lethal to adults 60 and over yes. who have underlying health conditions. Yes. Yes. And if you read this, uh, here, I'll send it to you because you're such a sweet. No, it, it send it. you sure. can send, send it to us. us. You can send it to me, but I trash can anything you There's send. There's nobody it. 65 or older in Australia you know. or New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. How, what did you say about New Zealand and, and Australia? I said he's acting like there's nobody 65 or older in New Zealand. And New Zealand only I has said about in 500. The US, in the U.S., you're the one that's touting the number of cases 
and I told you in the U.S. this is what the story is. Don't go to New Zealand. Apparently, the topic tonight is not getting us an audience. I don't know why. Yes, Vernon. You know what the biggest problem in our country is? In what? China, in China, only nine percent of their population are considered obese. Mm -hmm. In our country, it's forty-two percent. Yep. Yep. And obesity is one of the killers. Right. Yep. I I make up about four of that forty-two. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you are you are a a walking, talking. Um, um, comorbidity. Comorbidity. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. I mean, you had cancer, right? Still might still have it. You might still have it. <clears throat> um, you 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 are overweight. I am slightly overweight. You yeah. know. Hey, I I'm I uh, I'm down to two oh nine. Uh, I was two twenty three before all of this started going on. And How tall are you? Five eight. Uh, you know, the, hey, the goal is to get to under 200, then I'll have another goal. He's 5'10 in Trump world, though. Uh, yeah, with, with <laughs> lips. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is is that, that uh, you know, we, Fauci today said that we, of all the nations in the world, are the epicenter yep. of the coronavirus. How do you feel about that, Phil? All right, Fauci, Fauci, fake news, hang hey, He's being four and a half percent the of the population, four and a half percent of the world population, yet we have 25 percent of the deaths. Really? Yep. yep. Targeted. We have what a percentage of the world population? Four and a half percent four and a half of the world percent. population. And we have 25 percent of the deaths. Yep. Yes. Wow. Well, I don't know that I feel that good about that, but, you know, uh, but I just think that, you know, you know, you know I got to tell you something, and I know Phil's going to drive Phil nuts. I was watching Biden today, and as craggy as he looks, and as uh, kind of it isn't uh, the word doddering isn't isn't the term. Uh, he no, he's spry. He's spry. Yeah. Um, I said to myself, and I mentioned this to Marjorie. I said, you know. He's likable. You know, he's not, you he don't look at him and go, this guy's an asshole, or this guy's a shithead, or I can't stand him, or he's off-putting. I mean, even if you don't like him, if, even if you don't believe in his politics, he's not particularly an obnoxious person, yeah. you know? Where Trump is has just this whole, how can I call, what can I call it, this whole... Uh, um, thing of just nothing but negatives in his personality. Uh, that's why I think Biden's going to win. I think the working man likes him. I think they relate to him far more. And I think that people do feel that Trump has done a lousy job. Okay? In spite of what Phil thinks. Uh, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a good photograph off of Twitter. What? Can what is it? that? No, I can't see it. Can't oh, see it. I've seen that one. What is that? It's a pickup truck with two people hanging out the back that are morbidly oh, obese with guys. Trump flags. No, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened in Kentucky? Uh, some uh, Eastern Kentucky today, yesterday? Was uh, what happened? Was there something that happened there? Yeah, I think uh, two two people inbred with each other again. No, no, no. There was something. Yeah. something uh, uh, newsworthy. Uh, yeah, two people inbred with each other. Oh, two people didn't inbred with each other yesterday. That was... I, know, there, I heard on the news there was something going on in Kentucky. Huh? Your, uh, Vernon's from Kentucky. I, maybe he knew. Yeah. Well, I, I do know that uh, uh, Trevor Noah uh, put our, our state on the map with a 10-minute uh, story about Breonna Taylor. And I had not read all of the newspaper clippings, but apparently it was in the newspaper that when the police stormed her apartment and shot her multiple times, they did nothing to help her medically for 20 minutes, and she right. was probably still alive. Yep. Jeez. Uh, was that it? I, I know there was something na uh, that made the national news, but I don't remember. Well, that was, yeah, Trevor Noah on the Daily Social Distancing yeah. Show did a story on that. Those cops in Colorado 
put those girls on the on the ground and made them lay, handcuffed them and made them lay on the street. Well, their mother. I was they, like six years yeah, old. A six yeah. year old. They and took their mother girl. and then they took the kids and they made them lie down on the hot pavement. Hot pavement. Minutes. Huh? Were they selling lemonade? You know, if they were selling lemonade, that's without a permit. That that could be an issue. How hot that asphalt gets in the sun. Yeah, can you imagine that shit? Jesus. Uh, you see, I mean, this is what we're saying. What I'm saying, you know, what kind of world are we living in now? It's yeah. it, it's just. It's well, called bizarro world. It, it, bizarro yeah, world. How, yeah. how do they not walk up and look at the license plate? Isn't that the first thing you do with a stolen vehicle? You don't just see a blue SUV and think a blue SUV is a blue SUV. It was a motorcycle that was stolen. Yeah, they weren't even looking for an SUV. Yeah, it was oh, a really? motorcycle. They were but looking the, for a motorcycle. The license plate was the same, only it was a different state. What? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it was a stolen motorcycle, but they it was a car. they pulled it over, but it was, the car license was a different state. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't know who's giving... You know, I don't know who's giving Trump his advice, uh, but man, you know, there's, I, 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 I well, I don't, wouldn't want to give him advice because I wouldn't want him to win, but gee, there's so many things he could be doing to turn this thing around, and all it, cared. well, all it is is you, yeah. you take a problem that you have or perception, and you walk into it, you know, you go like, well, uh, well, yesterday you said that uh, you know the thing in bo in uh, uh, in uh, uh, you know the explosion was uh, perhaps uh, uh, set by people and it was a terrorist action and whatever. And then you say today, well, upon reflection now and upon closer looking at it, it seems we it wasn't and maybe I spoke too early. America would have an entirely different opinion of him, but he can't admit when he's done something. That's wrong, you know. Here's the best poster. Here's the best poster I've found so far. Well, let Look me see here. I, I just don't know if we can see that. Uh, <laughs> love thy neighbor, hate thy neighbor. Oh, okay. Yep, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Smell thy neighbor's hair. Joe Biden, love thy neighbor. Trump, hate thy neighbor. It's just really just. Well, you that see, thing. Phil, that's the only argument you've got against Biden, and you may as well vote for him because uh, smelling somebody's hair is. Uh, you know, minor compared to, compared good. compared to uh, compared you to know, grabbing a pussy get, or getting a blowjob from a porn star. I guess we should be that lucky. Oh well, now that's luck. Uh, not it's if you not, got enough money. It's, it's not exactly. You're agreeing with him. I can do anything I want. Uh, if you have money, you can do anything you want. Sometimes you can. Another statistic that I I read about this week, Alex. Mm -hmm. During the 2008 financial disaster in this country, the two years following 2009 to 2011, 97% mm -hmm. of the people in this country lost an average of 4% of their net worth. The upper 7% really? gained 28% yeah. of their net worth. Yep. Yeah, that was a setup. You know, there, there were, uh, I knew guys that were in these uh, in these deals to buy blocks of 500 foreclosed homes at a time, sight unseen. They would just uh, they uh, a group of guys, and uh, the the banks would sell them homes in in uh, in groups of 500, and uh, you know the the people who wanted to buy those homes individually they couldn't buy them, and it was uh, you know the the government the and and the banks they were in cahoots. If the point were, is, the point is, we're going through a similar time right now, and to the next two years, we're probably going to see the same thing happen, where the bottom 93 percent are going to lose net worth, and the upper seven percent are going to gain net worth. Well, it's unfortunate. It's not the the WalMarts and the Lowe's and the Home Depots that are going to lose. It's or the Amazons. It's going to be well, Amazon made a lot of money. Guy. It's going to be the guy who committed suicide in San Francisco because oh, okay. he couldn't no, open his restaurant. No, no question about it. No question about it. But, I mean, Amazon, for instance, this has been a, this has been a godsend for Amazon, yeah. this whole co coronavirus. I know how, and, and, how, how much stuff have I bought in the last six months, and it's all been from, you know, yeah. from Amazon. I didn't go down to anywhere to buy something. 
Didn't they say Jeff Bezos made thirteen billion dollars? Probably, personally probably. Day? Yeah. One day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like he needs I think it. Jeff, I think Jeff Bezos could do a whole lot to improve his reputation and his company's reputation if he would use his delivery vans to help the postal service. Uh, you know, if, uh, they're saying if it wasn't for Jeff Bezos and Amazon, there'd be no postal service. It's that's what's keeping. Uh, the Postal Service. Uh, if it wasn't for the 2006 uh, Republicans in the House and Senate, there wouldn't be any problem with the post office. Uh, okay. Exactly. Uh, you exactly. know, based on that, Charlie, if the Queen had balls, she'd Phil, be Phil, the post office shouldn't be having any real problems. <laughs> They've but, always No, but it, it had problems because oh. of this whole thing about, uh, what was it, the, the retirement fund? The finance, 75 years of retirement ahead of time. They're the only fucking entity in the whole fucking world that has to do that. And the because 2006 it, it's not, Republicans did it. It's not in government. The it's not fully, the post office is not fully government, isn't it? A quasi No, it's a quasi-government, but the government tells them what they can, can and can't do. And, for example, uh, it, for example, the government the government prohibits the post office from performing simple banking functions, which would help a lot of poor yeah. uh, people, people with low incomes, who have to rely on these check cashing services that charge these exorbitant fees. Well, if the postal service would provide simple banking uh, functions, they wouldn't have to rely on these places. Mm -hmm. But they're prohibited from doing that by law. And now you've got a. Um, 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 what do you call it? Trump donor is the head of the post office, the postmaster general, yeah. who is now doing everything he can to gut the Just post office before the election so he can slow down mail-in ballots. I don't think mail-in ballots are going to, I, I know they're going to be challenged uh, in court, and I don't think that they're going to allow the mass mail-in ballots that they have. Well, what are mass mail-in ballots? Mass mail-in. Phil, Nobody's Phil. planning a mass mail-in. Phil, That's I'm planning, I, I'm planning that when I get my ballot, when I get my ballot, I'm going to send it in immediately, and that may be a good month before the election. Now, did you register uh, absentee, or are you expecting no, uh, ballots I, being mailed no, to I, everyone? No, I, I, uh, I asked for mail-in ballots. Right. And so believe it or not, there's very little difference between absentee. Oh, there's a big, there's a big no, difference. no, to there's Trump no there is because that's the only way he there's, votes, there's but he doesn't no want to difference. seem like he's voting but by mail-in. What they're talking about is they're talking about mailing everybody. You see, there's in Nevada, uh, there were 200,000 people uh, that fell off the uh, voter. The, hi, there she is. Off the voter list yeah. because they mailed him a postcard uh, it, they came back, said they didn't live there anymore. Then they mailed them something else, and they had 30 days to, to do something. Well, these 200,000 people fell off uh, the, the voter registration line, and they're going to mail those that's guys a that, that's, a that's, that's a court. No, that's a court. That's not. That's yes, according to Trump. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. A let's ask Adrian what she thinks. What do you think, Adrian? Yeah, do you want mail-in <laughs> ballots? Do you want mail-in ballots? It's not a trick question. It <laughs> For Trump, it's a trick question. What, what they're mailing in mass is applications. The people still have to send the applications back. Uh, and, the, and, and the signatures mail, have to match on the record. And they only mail Democrats. And there's a, oh, yeah. They, yeah, they only right. mail ballots with only Democrats on it. Oh, yeah. Then right. you'll see the fraud. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Voter fraud is a is an is an invention of Republicans who are afraid to let everybody vote. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll just be I, I'll just be glad future. when the day comes here in a few months when we don't have to talk about Trump anymore and we can get on the happier stuff to talk about. Okay, <laughs> and Phil yeah. can be sitting in the corner licking his ball. Oh, excuse me, licking his. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 basketball, basketball. I just realized we have younger <laughs> viewers here. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, she's adorable, isn't she? It's it's amazing. Brian is I'll so that. lucky. Remember when we were that flexible? We were three <laughs> yeah. months old. But yeah, that, that was about it three months ago. Oh, my God. Three, when I was three months that old. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Uh, you, we, 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 <laughs> 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 we, we've run out of time. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Phil. 
Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Adrian. And also thank uh, that guy who's your father for being with us tonight. Will everybody give a big wave goodbye? And I'll give you a wave goodbye back. Come on, wave, everybody. Wave. Okay. There we go. There she is. Okay. Oh, man. She is the best. She is just the best. And flexible. Uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we're... We're, uh, we're making way here. Yeah, making way for uh, the next show on this very same program, uh, which is, of course, uh, on GapNet, which is, of course, uh, the intersection with Jack Bishop. I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, and be safe out there and wear a mask.